Hey guys, it's Dana from this yellow farmhouse and today I'm going to share with you my yarn hutch makeover. When we moved to our farmhouse, I chalk painted this hand-me-down hutch to repurpose it into beautiful yarn storage. And while I've decorated the top part, I really needed to organize the bottom half. There really was no organization under there and it became so neglected that it was creating an avalanche when I opened the door. Now that I've organized and decorated it, I decided to walk you through the process of donating, keeping, and organizing my yarn stash, as well as needles, using the exact baskets and organizers and decor so that you can make one over just like this without any of the guesswork. So all that info is down in the description box for you. Okay, on to the storage bit. This isn't even all of my yarn. I had three tubs under our bed and one storage ottoman that was stuffed, plus two or three project bags scattered throughout our house. I'm never going to use all this yarn. It almost seems like I'm weighted down by it all. And what happens when I cast on a new project? I never shop my stash because it's overwhelming. It's a weekend project just to pull it all out and find matching skeins. And I just end up ordering new yarn because I can't even dig into the stuff that I have. So I'm stepping out of the cycle, keeping my favorites, and getting rid of the rest. I'll be giving some to my family and then donating some to our library and elementary school. I also still will keep a tub of just kids craft yarn, whatever cheap colorful stuff that they can get into. So here are the bare bones of the hutch. It used to have glass covering the entire back, but it was a little dated and added to the clutter of the room as you can imagine by showing the reflection of all the yarn and everything else in the room. So TV, moving kids, the fan, and lights on. So we used leftover wood from our garden fence and painted it and attached it with craft glue. So that was the issue with the top half. Now, before we get to the bottom collection of chaos, let me show you the drawers. These were collecting miscellaneous craft supplies, but I really wanted the whole purpose of the hutch to be supporting and organizing my yarn and my knitting. So I decided I needed to dedicate them to knitting needles, patterns, and crochet hooks, and other knitting accessories like looms to keep them organized and in one place. So I really needed to organize these knitting needles and crochet hooks and so I ended up taking a piece of white poster board, cutting it to the size of the middle wide drawer that I have and then I just drew what compartments I wanted to have based on what knitting needles I have. So then we picked out some aspen wood that was three inches by a quarter inch and my husband cut it all to size based on what I had drawn on the poster board. He glued it together with some wood glue and then just kind of propped it with some extra little pieces of wood so that it was pushing up against each other. And then I let it dry for one day, just a little bit over one day, before we took it back out, took the poster board out, and then I just put it back in. Now I do think I'm gonna keep it not painted. I'm gonna keep it just raw wood because it's inside the drawer and I don't, really want it to be bright white inside the drawer. I want it to kind of match the inside. So not going to paint it, at least not right now. And so, so the way that I organized these knitting needles is by putting crochet hooks in one compartment because I really don't have as many of those and they don't need to be separated as much. And then I just took from size 0 to 15 and just separated it based on how many I had of each. Now 15 and 13 are together and I only did two sizes in that compartment because they're thicker needles and I knew it was going to get kind of crowded if I just evenly spaced it all out. So I just went based on what needles I have and how many of those I have. And I didn't label it or anything so that as I get more or anything like that I can just switch it around and nothing's super permanent. 
Now the two side drawers have become pattern storage and knitting accessory storage. So since there are no cubbies, everything floats and ends up falling over. So I ordered these baskets on Amazon. So I really needed the top to hold the shorter balls or the long skeins that haven't been caked up yet. And the wire baskets are more for the yarn that I have bigger quantities of. So my I Love This Cotton, my Lion Brand Wooly Sick and Quick, Hometown USA, those are all in the wire baskets. And the more shallow baskets are kind of catch-all baskets. So that, like I said, it's the longer skeins, the little balls that are kind of short and you'd end up stacking them in the taller baskets anyway. So now that it's all organized and pretty, down here we're going to head back up to the top section, organize that and get it all pretty for spring. All right, on to the top portion. The, the part that everyone's gonna see when they come in my house, what I'm gonna photograph for the blog and on Instagram. So I really wanted this to stay light and open and airy, especially going into spring and summer. I didn't really want it weighted down with too much greenery. So I did add a couple of plants. I have a lot of baby's breath and I did end up keeping a fake little pine tree because we do live in the woods and I did want to have some of the outside coming in. But like I said, I'm keeping it really open and airy. I have only light colored yarns. I had asked on Instagram what you guys thought of the darker yarns and the light yarns or a mix. And I'm going to stick with the lighter yarns. So I like that our whole living room is basically white and I like that it's not drawing too much attention away from the rest of the living space. And like I said, it just keeps a little bit more of an open, airy feel to it. Now these wire baskets are actually the same ones I used underneath. And the reason that I ended up bringing those in and ordering a few more is because I didn't actually used to have baskets in here. And I kind of just had the yarn stacked and it was turning into an avalanche or like a weird pyramid of yarn because yarn doesn't stand straight up without being held into place with something. So I wanted something that was see-through. So the wire is perfect. It kind of supports this open and airy feel, but it helps hold a little bit of the structure so that I can have a little more of the, the plants and the baby's breath and have that be a little bit more fluid and airy while still keeping the yarn a little bit controlled. So the plants are just in terracotta pots that I whitewashed with paint and I actually have a link to that in the blog. The baby's breath is just in galvanized buckets and to give them a little bit of height I just stacked it. I stacked some knitting books, some issues of Bella Grace magazine, a little bit of just there's a country living book, anything that adds to this knitting and kind of indoor outdoor feel that's going with this whole airy open spring hutch vibe. So this is by no means how this hutch is going to look forever. I will switch it up with the seasons whenever I get more yarn and use up what's in here. But I really like the base that I have and like I said having the structure versus some of the more fluid design elements in there and I think I'm going to try to stick with that especially the wire baskets. So in the summer I will definitely bring in some more fresh flowers once that's growing in our garden and then when we're back to Christmas and winter it's going to have a little bit more greenery probably a few more of the twinkle lights in there and really it's just going to change with the seasons but I'm hoping that this is a good base for pretty much all year round and I'll just add in some design elements to that. So I hope this video really helped inspire you to first of all go through your yarn stash and find all that yarn that's just weighing you down. Match your skeins together, find your needles and organize, grab your patterns and toss the ones that you either have made or you never will made. Like if you made and you didn't like or you never will make it. Yarn is beautiful and special and it shouldn't all live under our beds tucked into giant storage tubs. It should be out, it should be breathing and I really hope that this video inspired you to 
make something similar or do something that's a little bit more your style. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more like this, and also head over to the Farmhouse Knitting Podcast where I will show you all this yarn in action being knit up into beautiful projects.